Welcome to Reread, where I'm rereading through the expanded universe in chronological order. Folks, we are on Wild Space by Karen Miller. I remember the first time I reviewed this, I said the book was meh, and uh, I was dead wrong. This is an excellent book. This is, right now, my favorite Clone Wars novel, and I'm going to explain why. Again, this gets the What Was I Thinking Award from uh, the first time reading it through, because reading it this time, it's just great. It explains so much. It sets a lot of the timeline for what goes on in the Clone Wars at this time. In fact, I'd totally forgotten this. This book takes place just, well, at first it takes place a little bit after Episode 2, but then it skips ahead and the main adventure takes place right after the Clone Wars movie by Dave Filoni. Now, this is a perfect mix of uh, Dave Filoni's Clone Wars and the Expanded Universe. I mean, Karen Miller does a fantastic job. She did her homework. Obi-Wan's past is brought up with uh, you know, Qui-Gon, Melinda Don, and other things are brought into that. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot, lot of references to other adventures that were tied into this. Uh, Anakin and Padme, we get, we get a perspective from Padme, which we hardly ever get at all. And it's great. It's like, what was she thinking? You know, it's almost like stubborn pride. She's doubling down. She, she did tell Anakin she loved him in the arena. And so now, you know, cat's out of the bag. She can't go back to the whole thing about living a lie. Nope. Now that that's out, she has to go through with it. And it's not like you, know, she doesn't want to, but now it's like, I've made my pledge to Anakin, because I did think we were going to die, but now that we're not, I'm going to continue that pledge. I'm going to hold it. And it's a great perspective. Uh, Palpatine has a fantastic perspective that we don't get to see that much. How the wheels keep working with him, and even though at the end things don't go according to plan, it's okay. You know, eventually, you know, the, the world, the galaxy will be his. Now, Anakin is not really a part of this. Anakin and Ahsoka, they're mentioned. I believe it's going off the adventures of Dave Filoni's Clone Wars and kind of saying, hey, when Anakin and Ahsoka were doing this, this is what Obi-Wan was doing. And there is this big disconnect between Obi-Wan and the Senate, right? He doesn't like a lot of senators. He doesn't like politics. Well, how are he and Bail Organa such great buddies? This book tells you how they became great buddies. Um, it talks about his special connection with Padme Amidala. Bail Organa knows that. He, he, he gets um, some, some secrets from a reliable resource that there is a Sith, and he doesn't even know what a Sith is. He doesn't know what the Sith are. And Padme, of course, does. And so he goes, Padme, will you talk to the Jedi? They'll think I'm crazy. And Padme goes, oh, not really. They know about the Sith. And so this whole secret comes out that Obi-Wan admits that they've known about them for at least 10 years now. So has Padme Amidala. Bale's a little hurt by all this. And even though he appreciates, acknowledges the Jedi, he has a lot of questions about them. He doesn't really know exactly how to separate the legend from, you know, the myth from the, the actual real stories of what a Jedi can do. And he and Obi-Wan, he refuses to let Obi-Wan follow up on this lead without him. And so he and Obi-Wan are basically tied to the hip on this mission to go investigate to see what the Sith plan is. Now, as they're going, it leads them to a planet where they have to crash land on it. It's an undiscovered planet or one that was erased from the maps, just like Kamino, which Obi-Wan has a bad feeling about this. It's a Sith planet, lots of deadly Sith artifacts. Basically, it's Palpatine's Sith treasure trove. It's this temple where he keeps all his little knickknacks. And all, there's so much dark side magic on the planet that Obi-Wan is hallucinating a lot. And he's thinking about all the awful things that's happened in his past before. And, you know, you know Bale's kind of helping him through this. It has, first off, while they're traveling there, they're getting to know each other a little bit better. And there's some excellent dialogue. You know, I'd say that some of these Clone Wars novels, a lot of dialogue, nothing happens. This is a lot of dialogue, but we see where it's building. It's building a relationship between Bail Organa and Obi-Wan. And when they're on the planet, it's a lot like Lord of the Rings. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but a lot like Fred, uh, not, yeah, no, um, Frodo and Sam's. Who's Fred? <laughs> Frodo and Sam's adventure traveling to Mount Doom and how it's just a big slog and how Sam is there supporting and helping Frodo get to uh, the uh, volcano to throw the ring in. And that's basically what you know, Bail Organa is doing for Obi-Wan. As Obi-Wan is suffering and getting worse and worse, uh, Bail Organa is showing his inner strength and showing he's not the average senator 
that Obi-Wan assumed he was. And together they find a way off the planet and destroy the Sith Temple taboo, which is not making Palpatine happy, like I said. But either way, by the end of this adventure, they build a believable friendship. It's not just, I hate you, I hate you too. Oh, wait, we have a common enemy, the Sith. We're friends now. Yay. It wasn't even like that. It's a great build, and it's a solid read. I mean, there's not one moment where your eyes are glazing over, and you're like, ah, okay, what, are they still talking on the spaceship? No, all those moments are great. It's really like 80 pages. It's a big chunk of the adventures, them just traveling. I mean, just getting to the planet is a big adventure. But there's a, there's sabat, they, play, they play sabat together. They drink tea. They eat meals together and just have different co conversations, uh, you know, kind of nitpicking each other's professions. And it's really good. It's great stuff right now. I mean, the Clone Wars novels I've been reading aren't great, but I got to I got to apologize the first time I reviewed this guy. I know I didn't say it was just awesome like this, but it it really is awesome putting a bunch of things in the Clone Wars in perspective, giving us that inside, you know, uh, thought process to what's going on with Padme Amidala and just solid stuff all the way through. And even Anakin and Obi-Wan's relationship is explored a little bit, even though Karen Miller doesn't say it. But she does imply that, you know, it's kind of wild that, you know, he and Anakin were, you know, they're tied to the hip. They're best friends. They're just bu building on that relationship. And then there's Ahsoka, you know. He always has to deal with Ahsoka now. But, but then she tries to tie that and say, but that's, that's why she can, he can reach out to Obi-Wan and say, hey, what's it like dealing with a Padawan? <laughs> you know, and that makes it, brings them closer. But it obviously doesn't. It obviously doesn't. It basically just splits them further apart. Which is true. Ahsoka is a terrible, terrible character. Okay, sorry, had to take a dig at Ahsoka, who's barely in this, which is another great thing about the book. All right, folks, that's it for now. See you next time.